हेलो 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 सो यूजिंग दिस फर्स्ट इक्वेशन uh we had we had analyzed this first equation in uh, detail uh using the perturbation theory lambda phi for perturbation theory the whatever the leading order results we have um and calculated uh, the the running the flow of lambda with respect to mu and that uh, uh, goes by defining first defining beta of lambda which is epsilon going to zero mu d lambda d mu we calculated that um uh, at the leading order in perturbation theory and then integrated uh, that equation uh, and found the running of uh, lambda and we saw that lambda diverges at a finite value of mu which we call called lambda pole um now what i will do is to uh, describe various scenarios um what physical interpretation that will emerge if we have different kinds of profile for beta lambda um these profiles are obtained in not not necessarily by perturbation theory but in by any method if you know if you know beta lambda by some non perturbative uh, analysis for example um then uh, uh, then if if the profile is given in this particular way then how what that means Uh, is what we are going to uh, discuss so various scenarios uh let me first consider where uh, the scenario where lambda diverges um so we'll draw uh, the beta lambda versus lambda curves uh let us consider a scenario where uh, so lambda starts from zero um uh, lambda equal to zero is a free theory and then um when lambda becomes positive uh then uh, then we calculate beta lambda and calculate um and integrate it and find um okay the profile of beta lambda is given by something like this uh, which can be integrated to find the uh, running of it uh, running of uh, lambda with respect to mu um so let me call this scenario a and uh, there is another scenario which is like this um, b so what happens in this case uh, is uh, lambda diverges at finite energy so the way to read uh, this kind of graphs uh, the the way to uh, figure out the flow from this kind of graph is as follows so beta is given by uh, mu d lambda d mu so if beta is positive then d lambda d mu is positive which means uh, uh, with uh, when we increase mu lambda will increase that means uh, the the flow uh, mu can be viewed as an internal parameter which is increasing along the curve uh, which is going towards increasing lambda so that is that is the flow of mu in this case or in this case this is how mu is increasing as mu is increasing uh, it is going towards larger value of lambda if beta lambda will be negative then uh, the flow will be towards an, a lower value of reducing value of uh, lambda that is how one reads it so in this case what we mean by finite energy is that lambda becomes infinity at finite energy and in this case lambda becomes infinity at infinite energy so then um uh log so log mu by mu bar will be given by lambda bar to infinity d lambda by beta lambda that's just this equation 
uh, the same equation. Um, and this is, uh, this quantity uh, is less than infinity in the case of A and infinity in the case of B. Now, if in the case of A, uh, if, the, if the coupling becomes divergent at a finite value of the scale, and if that is a physical theory, then th the question arises how to interpret it. Um, uh, so it's a question of whether the theory a quantum mechanically is consistent because it's divergent means it's uh, uh, it, this is a singularity at a finite scale. So uh, one scenario corresponding to that is thought is uh, to save from this kind of a catastrophe is uh, is to is a concept of quantum triviality. Uh, quantum triviality says that uh, classically the theory is uh, an interacting theory, uh, uh, which is interesting. But uh, when you go to a quantum theory, uh, then um, then the problem arises because of this kind of behavior, behavior of the beta function, and the theory can be consistent only when um, only when um, uh, the coupling is zero, only when the uh, only when the theory is free. which means quantum mechanically only the trivial case is consistent. Um, uh, there is no non-trivial interaction. If you have interaction, then there is going to be this kind of a singularity that will be encountered at finite energy. Um, this is called quantum triviality. Now, this has been investigated uh, actually in this question because um, for a scalar field and uh, so, so the, 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 the platform where you can actually discuss uh, non perturbative uh, quantum field theory um, for, for an arbitrary quantum field theory, um, of course, uh, you can study non perturbative behavior of a theory, but those should all be symmetry guided. Um, if you do not take help of symmetries, um, then uh, then only what we understand is perturbation theory. Uh, but if you do not want to restrict to symmetries and still talk about non-perturbative theory, the one standard approach is the lattice field theory. So using lattice uh, field theory, you can um, uh, you can calculate uh, the running of this thing uh, of the of of lambda. And uh, there is a strong uh, indication uh, that uh, the full quantum theory uh, is, is, is actually free. The, at the full quantum level, the theory is actually free. Uh, so that is the statement of quantum triviality. What one shows actually at a technical level, so uh, in, Lattice field theory. Um, start with pi four theory on lattice with spacing with lattice spacing given by. Cut off A. 
So lattice spacing is A, which is the cutoff in this theory. Um, uh, then the full quantum theory, admits a continuum limit. only if it's free. That's a statement. However, uh, Weinberg has a criticism on these results. In fact, there is, a, there, are open, there is opinion in the literature that, uh, or in the community that any scalar field theory uh, is actually um, quantum, qu quantum trivial. Uh, if you do a non-perturbative analysis of any scalar field theory, it's only the free theory that is that is consistent in this sense. And uh, one does not know, uh, of course, a scalar field exists in uh, in standard model Lagrangian. One doesn't know what what is the uh, statement, what should be the statement in presence of other uh, fields. So standard model has other fields. So that question is open. This question for the scalar field theory, there is some uh, there is an opinion that uh, a strong evidence or suggestion or indication exists where um, where the theory becomes quantum mechanically trivial um, uh, because of because of this kind of result because of this kind of a result. Now, um, Weinberg has a criticism against it that uh, if uh, you suppose we had a consistent interacting theory. Um, in the, uh, that existed in the in the continuum, then uh, what one could do is to integrate out uh, degrees of freedom everywhere except lattice points. Uh, so that is like that is a complicated procedure, but uh, you can try to imagine uh, that taking averages, uh, taking averages of the effects of all points in the space time except for the lattice points. And then one would arrive at an effective theory that is living on the lattice. Um, if that would be done, then the theory written on the lattice in a, is an extremely complicated theory that will involve all sorts of complicated interactions involving derivatives and so on. And uh, so Weinberg's criticism is that that kind of a lattice theory, most uh, general uh, kind of a lattice theory uh, has not been considered for this type of analysis. So one doesn't know what would happen if you take a most general um, uh, uh, lattice theory, uh, most general type of scalar field theory on a lattice, do this analysis and take the continuum limit where there will be a non-trivial fixed point or non-trivial continuum limit should exist or not. Uh, that, that question, uh, there is no answer to that question. That analysis has not been done. So let me write it down.
Okay. So um, in the other case, uh, the, 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 the scenario B, uh, so this was for A, Um, for scenario B, uh, the, mm, the coupling diverges only at infinite scale. And um, um, and, the, and, the, and the way, uh, so since it's an infinite scale, um, it is a less serious situation here. And uh, the way uh, it, uh, it diverges, uh, the asymptotic behavior um, and asymptotic behavior of the coupling um, that may not be dependent on uh, on on the on on the on the value of the coupling at the finite level. So they may have some depending on wha how what is the asymptotic behavior of the beta function. Um, the result may be independent of of the value of of mu of, of the value of the lambdas. Uh, at finite values of mu. Uh, so that is one possibility there. So in this case, Let's now consider um, another situation, another scenario, um, a UV fixed point. So in this case, Uh, lambda starts out uh, in positive, then beta is positive, and then it goes down and crosses lambda uh, beta equal to uh, zero um, at a point uh, where uh, the value of lambda is say lambda uv. So in this case, uh, as I explained uh, in the previous situation, uh, since beta lambda is positive, uh, then if you start from any point here, the flow will be in this way, in this direction. Okay, so uh, which means that if you go to lower value of mu, uh, then if you take decreasing value of mu, then it is going to go to lambda equal to zero. So in that case, this is called an IR fixed point. So in this case, lambda equal to zero is an IR fixed point because fixed point means beta equal to zero. This does, but, uh, mm, but with increasing uh, mu, uh, the lambda will increase until this point. Uh, where again uh, beta hits a zero and therefore it's called a uv fixed point at large value of uh, at large value of mu um, one ends up getting here if you start out with a value uh, so if you start out with a lambda which is less than uh, lambda uv then you are here and the flow is along this direction because beta is positive if you start out with a uh, value which is higher than lambda uv, then you are here and beta is negative and therefore you should move towards the decreasing value of lambda. So therefore it's a fixed point because whichever way uh, you come, uh, you, you reach this, this particular fixed point and it's called a uv fixed point.
I mean, of course, uh, you know, um, the beta prime of lambda must be uh, negative here uh, for this kind of a scenario to, to work. Um, that uh, if you start out both positive, uh, uh, I mean, greater than or less than lambda uv, you are drawn uh, back to, uh, at a higher energy, you are drawn back to uh, lambda uv. Um, that is important, but the fact, but this is possible because of the fact that um, beta lambda is decreasing uh, from a positive value and, and going toward, towards zero. So here fixed point, uh, let me write here, fixed point implies beta lambda equals zero, which means coupling is scale invariant. If you plot uh, the lambda versus mu graph, then there is one value of um, lambda of u lambda uv. If you start above lambda uv, then you asymptotically go towards lambda uv. If you start below lambda uv, you and then also you asymptotically go towards lambda uv. For the IR fixed point, uh, one has uh, a behavior of lambda mu as uh, mu to the power say alpha with alpha positive. Okay, that's uh, that's a. Uh, that's a very standard uh, uh, behavior of QFTs and uh, near lambda equal to zero. Uh, and for the UV fixed point, uh, the characterization is that beta lambda UV um, is equal to zero. Uh, beta prime lambda UV is minus alpha with alpha greater than zero. And uh, therefore, for lambda close to lambda uv, one has mu d lambda d mu equals the Taylor expansion of beta around lambda uv. So the first term is beta of lambda uv, which is zero, and then the um, uh, then the then the next term in the Taylor expansion is lambda minus lambda uv times beta prime, which is minus alpha. Okay, and if you integrate that, you would get lambda of mu to be lambda uv plus mu to the power minus alpha. This type of behavior. Another uh, scenario is asymptotic freedom. Um, so in this case, uh, Uh, beta uh, lambda, this is beta lambda versus lambda. So at lambda equal to zero, um, beta lambda starts out being negative. Uh, it goes down and then it turns around and becomes like this. So let me call this point where it crosses zero as lambda ir. Then uh, you see, 
as I discussed earlier, that if you, if beta is negative, then uh, the then the mu will run towards uh, decreasing lambda. So uh, this is large value of mu when you uh, under under the uh, under under the uh, you know when when mu is increasing under the scale, um, the lambda is taken towards zero value. So it's a UV fixed point. And that happens uh, for any value of lambda that is uh, below lambda IR. So anywhere here, uh, starting from here, anywhere one chooses uh, the initial value of lambda, it will always be uh, taken towards zero, right? So with, uh, with the running at higher energy, the theory becomes more and more free and, uh, and, uh, and absolutely at infinite energy, it's completely free. Uh, this is called asymptotic freedom. It gets only if, if the initial lambda is such that the perturbation theory is um, uh, is working well, uh, then uh, then it gets only better at higher energies. On the other hand, if you look at if you focus at this point, then uh, starting from any value. Uh, lower than LIR, it will take away from LIR. If you take, uh, if you take a value, if you start with a lambda which is greater than LIR, then also it will take you away from LIR because now mu is increasing this way. So this is like, uh, if you, if you, if you uh, look at decreasing uh, mu, then decreasing mu is happening this way. So this is an IR fixed point. So this is a lambda versus mu curve. So maybe right and uh, draw it this way. So if you start out with the lambda um, slightly bigger than lambda IR, it will be going away. Similarly, if you start from slightly low, less than lambda IR, that also will flow away from that value of lambda. Yeah. 
this scenario uh, is important because um, QCD, uh, so we have, um, uh, there is a theory of quantum chromodynamics. And uh, so this, first of all, this happens with the, uh, uh, so in perturbation theory, if you calculate beta at a leading order, uh, then you get negative value, which is what we discussed previous lecture uh, uh, for lambda five foot theory with wrong sign of lambda. Uh, then it will flip the sign, um, and and that is a that is an example. That's a toy example. So physical example is the quantum chromodynamics where QCD beta function uh, will be uh, will be is, was found to be negative, and uh, that is related to uh, confinement that the quarks and gluons are confined within um, the nucleons and. Um, that is that is an important physical uh, example of this scenario.